Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial here on right angle trigonometry. So we're gonna look at three trig ratios in this video. So just first of all, a trig ratio is a ratio of the side lengths to the angles in a right triangle. So we do have three of these. I'm gonna talk briefly about each of these and just kinda of go over this memory aid for you. I'm sure you've seen this at some point in your studies. So Katoa, if you can remember that, you'll have a hard time forgetting these three trig ratios. So remember that trig ratios refer to the ratio of two side lengths with respect to a given angle. So first of all, let's talk about so, S-O-H. Don't misspell so, don't spell it S-O-A or you'll end up with a totally different trig ratio. For sine, uh, the S refers to sine. We, we have the opposite sides, so that's the O over the hypotenuse. So you can see where that, that little memory aid comes from. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. When we're talking about the sine of a given angle, for instance, this angle here, I'm referring to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse side. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. You can develop the ratios of cos and tan in the same way. Looking at this angle, our ka memory aid tells us that we do adjacent over hypotenuse for cos. So we would look at this side over this side for this angle. Likewise for tan, we're gonna use the opposite side and we're gonna put that over the adjacent side. So those are your three trig ratios. This is kind of important. When you're working with trig ratios, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, unless you've been working with radians, in which case your calculator will be in radian mode. Okay, so solving for side lengths using trig ratios. So our example here says, use the appropriate trig ratio to solve for the unknown side length. So the first thing we need to do here, I always like to label the triangle. This, this guy right here tells us that this side is the hypotenuse. I'm looking at this 28 degree angle. This is our angle in question here. In all of these trig ratios, there's this little symbol. This is called theta, not feta or feta, like the Greek G's. It's theta, T-H-E-T-A. So this refers to the angle in question. So that's this guy here, this is our theta angle. So with respect to that angle, this side here would be our opposite side. Okay, it's the side opposite to the angle, which means that this side here is left over as the adjacent side. Adjacent just means next to. Okay, so the hypotenuse is also adjacent to this angle, but the hypotenuse cannot be both the hypotenuse and the adjacent. Okay, so this is the left side, that's the adjacent side. Well, we're working with the opposite side, right? We, we need this X in our expression. We don't have any values for our hypotenuse, so we're gonna kind of just throw that in the garbage, uh, but we do have the adjacent side. Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. For every trig problem, you're gonna identify the two sides that you have, and you're gonna go to memory A, and you're gonna find the piece that has the O and the A in it. So, so does not help us, ka does not help us, but toa does help us. You can see there's an O and an A there. Therefore, we are using the tan ratio. The tan ratio tells us the tan of this angle, this 28 degree angle, is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we write that in this way, the opposite over the adjacent. Next, we just need to do a little bit of algebra. So we're gonna multiply both sides by 9.2 to get rid of the one on the bottom. As a result, the 9.2 is now multiplied by the tan 28, and we've solved for x. We're gonna type this into our calculator. Now just be very careful with your calculator. Everybody's calculators are different, so maybe once you see the answer here, just make sure that you're able to arrive at that answer yourself on your own calculator. What I do on mine is I type 9.2, tan 28, exactly how I see it. I don't even have to put a multiplication sign in between. You might have to with your calculator, but either way you should end up with 4.89 for your x value. Okay, so we've solved for the opposite side in our triangle. Taking a look at this next example, same thing, I wanna start by labeling all of my sides of my triangle. This time I'm looking at this 41 degree angle. Okay, so with respect to this 41 degree angle, the 21 would be the opposite side I've got my hypotenuse. I don't even need my adjacent side, but I'll label it anyways. So let's think, what trig ratio relates the opposite side of the right triangle to the hypotenuse? Going through your Sokotoa memory aid, you'll see right away that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We know we're gonna be working with sine in this case. Okay, great, so we've got the sine of 41. That's our opposite side over our hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is our x. So unfortunately, you're gonna see here that our x is now on the bottom of our expression. That makes it a little bit more difficult to isolate for x. So in this case, what we're gonna do is you're gonna think about this in terms of fractions. So we've got sine of 41 over one, and we've got 21 over x. 
what I could do is just flip both of these fractions. So you would see that I've got uh, the sine of 41 on the bottom on the left hand side and on the right hand side I now have my x on top. Okay, there's a couple different ways that you could solve for x here. I'm just going to show you one little trick that I use. You can see that now that the number is on the bottom, my x is on top, I can very easily just multiply both sides by 21. Okay, so if I do that, multiply both sides by 21, you can see that these guys are going to cancel and I've nicely solved for my x. Right, my 21 over 1, I can just multiply straight across and you'll see that you end up with this 21 over sine of 41. Once you get really good at this, you can see that you can really, you can just take this sine of 41 and switch it with this x. These two just kind of switch places. Okay, and algebraically, this is why that happens. Okay, so regardless of the method you use, next you're going to type in 21 divided by sine of 41, and you're going to get 32. So that's how you apply these trig ratios to solve for side lengths. Not too complicated as long as you can identify your opposite hypotenuse and adjacent sides and identify the correct trig ratio. Okay, as it turns out, we can also solve for unknown angles when we're giving two sides in a right triangle. On your calculator, I want you to just quickly see if you can find your second function or your shift button. You want to push second function and you want to access this tan inverse for this example here. So this example says find A if the tan of A is 0.75. So what we can do is we can take the tan inverse of both sides, if you will. Just picture me kind of taking the tan inverse of tan A. So tan inverse undoes this. It gets rid of that tan. So think of it as, as these two are sort of canceling out and you've solved for A. So we've got our angle by itself. But we can't just do tan inverse to one side. We would also have to do it to the other side as well. So we're going to take the tan inverse of 0.75. And you can see that's where that comes from on the left hand or on the right hand side. Once you punch this in your calculator, you're going to see that you're going to get 36.86. Okay, so we can actually solve for an unknown angle if we're given two sides in a triangle. And that's what I'm going to do in this example here. So it says use the appropriate trig ratio to solve for the unknown angles. So here's my unknown angle. Same process here. You want to look at that angle. You want to label your triangle. Okay, so we know this is the hypotenuse. I'm looking at this angle, so this must be the opposite side. That means that this is the adjacent side. So you need to find a trig ratio which relates the opposite to the adjacent side. Thinking about your Sokotoa memory aid, you'll quickly realize that you're dealing with tan. Okay, so we write the tan of a theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, our next step, this is the new piece. We've got to take the tan inverse. We want to get rid of tan. That'll help me solve for theta. And now I've got this new sort of weird expression here. Being very careful with your calculator, the way I type this in, I do my second function and then I open a set of brackets and I do this division inside the brackets. Okay, the reason being is it's more accurate. You're going to get a more accurate answer. Uh, what I've seen a lot of people do is they do the fraction in their, in their calculator first and they round it to only one or two decimals and then they take the tan inverse and their answer is not accurate as a result. Okay, so just open a set of brackets and, and let your calculator do the work for you. Okay, so we'll do another example here. Same sort of situation. You want to just sort of identify what you're being given. Okay, this is going to be our hypotenuse as always. Looking at this angle, this would be the side next to or adjacent to that angle. Right, I'm not even going to bother labeling my opposite side because it, it doesn't even help us here. Uh, but we want to find a trig ratio that's going to relate our adjacent and our hypotenuse sides. Thinking about Sokotoa, you'll quickly realize that you're working with cos. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So to get rid of this cos, we want to get theta by itself. We're going to take the cos inverse. Don't take the tan inverse. You want to take the cos inverse to get rid of cos. Same sort of situation. You're going to type second function or shift to access that cos inverse function, and you're going to open a set of brackets. Let your calculator compute this fraction for you, and you'll see that you end up with approximately 22.62 degrees. Okay, so we've solved for this unknown angle. We've got this 90 degree angle. We did that in both of these triangles. How can we solve for the other angle? Let's say I asked you to come up with this angle. I'll just call this one theta 2, for instance, if this was theta 1. To get theta 2, what I can do is just do 180 minus my two angles. Remember that a triangle's interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so that's another useful tool for you when you're working with triangles.